Hello and welcome to ITC TechShare. I'm Tom Grissom. Today I would like to share some of the things we've been working on at the Instructional Technology Center at Eastern Illinois University. And we've recently finished up the Learn OneNote online conference organized by Jared DeCamp. And it was a great conference. Uh, we had over 30 different presenters from all across the world, OneNote experts from both business and education. One of the highlights of the conference was a presentation by Steve Crapnell from Australia, who did a presentation about using a light board along with OneNote class notebook and how to flip the classroom. So what I thought I would do today is kind of show you the evolution of where we've been with what we're calling OneBoarding. And I'll give a shout out to uh, Daryl Webster from down in New Zealand. We've kind of been on parallel paths the last five or six years about using OneNote as presentation tools and uh, we've, we've come a long way. So this is the next evolution. So first of all, if you're not familiar with what a light board is, it's essentially a piece of glass that an instructor will write on with a spatial marker, a fluorescent marker, and it really glows and shows up. And, and it looks really impressive. It has, it has a really nice wow factor, and it really grabs your attention, especially the first time that you uh, see it. So let's just come over here, and I'm going to be using OneNote throughout this. This is an example of OneBoarding in action. So let me come up here, and let's just try drawing what a light board would look like. So essentially you just have a stand, uh, the piece of glass, and I'm going to use yellow here. And what makes it work is a string of LED lights that go all the way around that lights up the board. And the presenter stands off to the side in front of the glass. And he has a spatial marker, fluorescent marker, and I'm going to use the cyan color right here. And when the LED lights are shining, it really makes this uh, this uh, spatial marker glow. So the instructor will go through, mark up, do whatever they want to do, draw their spatial symbols, equations, whatever it might be. And it looks really, really nice in, in, a, professional, uh, in a professional way. So it, it, it looks nice and it does a fantastic job because the inventor of this was Michael Peshkin, a professor from Northwestern University. And one of the things that he wanted to solve was he hated having his back to the, you know, to the students as he would write on the chalkboard or on the whiteboard. So that's why he invented the, uh, in the, he invented the light board. But there are a couple of disadvantages. The, the first obvious one is if you're writing on a piece of glass, the audience from the other side sees a mirror image of it. So the cleverness of this to solve that problem, they use a camera to shoot through the glass and they go through a spatial little magic box, a video switcher, and flips the image and then they send the output um, over to a large screen TV. So the students are actually watching the TV over here with the instructor because if they were looking at the real uh, light board glass, all the writing would be backwards to them. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, now I'm using my digital pen, so as I said, this is one boarding in action. So I'm using my digital ink. Let me just erase, erase this. The other way that you can do it is if you put a mirror and shoot through the mirror and back and then send that output uh, over to your TV and you can do that in real time uh, as, as you're presenting. So once again, they'll see the, see the instructor uh, out there writing, writing the notes and things. So that's essentially what a light board is. The, I've got a YouTube video, I believe. Since this is OneNote, I can go out and pre-populate all of my content. So here is a YouTube video. I'm just going to hit play, and you'll see this appear. It'll start playing over my uh, shoulder here. And I'm going to uh, mute it here and just fast forward a little bit, a little bit here, so you can get the idea what what it's about. So you can see that he's writing, and all the words to the audience look in proper in the proper direction because they've done that flip. And then why I'm here, I also have in my OneNote, I want to give a shout out to uh, John Bergman, who is an early pioneer uh, in Flip Classroom. And he's also started using the light board and, uh, in some of his presentations and things. So that's what light boards are. But at the, at the OneNote conference, it really got a lot of us uh, thinking and discussing. 
And what it reminded me of was back in and then circa 2006 when the Khan Academy, Saul Khan started the Khan Academy and it really reminded me of those original videos that he did and he was just basically doing screencasting. He had a black background and using these bright colored markers and neon markers and it's kind of that same effect. The, the one thing that uh, Michael Peshkin wanted was to be able for the students to be able to see him in his online classes and, and face to face classes as he was, as he was writing with the, with the, with the glass. And, uh, that allowed them to do it. Saul Khan, you rarely see, uh, Saul's, uh, face. Uh, it's always just a screencast and you're just seeing him voice over and just kind of think out loud as he solves the different problems and things. But that's what it reminded me of. Now, along the same time, uh, back in around 2013, and this is 2014, again, I'm just going to play this YouTube video, and I'm going to talk over it. I've got it muted here. But one of the ways that we, we were looking at solving the problem was to use Miracast wireless presentation, and then that way I could pre present my screen up to the large screen projector at the front of the room, and I could walk around the class, and instead of having a board, I used my Surface Pro tablet and was writing, and it, the students saw everything in real time. The disadvantage to that is you're not seeing hand movement, you're just seeing the projection of the screen, whereas the light board, you do actually get to see somebody's hand. And I've asked a number of students if that makes a difference, and most of them say no, but that would be a, a fertile ground for some research out there. So what is OneBoarding 3.0? I've set up a small little studio here, so I've got a video camera that I'm looking directly into. I've got a backdrop behind me, I've got lights on either side of me, and then I've got the Surface Pro tablet. This is my digital device, my pen-enabled device, and of course I'm using OneNote. So what makes OneBoarding spatial is OneNote is the anchor for the whole system. It's the bedrock, it's the foundation that makes everything work. The second piece that I'm kind of uncompromising with is the device must be a pen-enabled device. You must be able to write with a stylus uh, with digital ink. So I'm just shooting this video, and I just want to go through some examples here. So just kind of some basic things. We might have a, a PowerPoint presentation. So this is one that I presented earlier. So because I have digital ink, I can talk. I'm talking into the camera. I can come up here, circle different things. I have different ink colors. I can even do rainbow ink. So we've got all kinds of different tools and things available to us. Uh, let's say that I was teaching math. So here's an example where I've got the, the math Cartesian coordinate with a graph of a line. But if you're a OneNote user, one of the great things about it is I can choose graph paper. So now then I've kind of put up this screen door effect in front of me, but this is actually, you know, grid paper, which is very handy if you're trying to graph equations, and that's just a click away in OneNote. So let me come down here and let's go to an example. Here's a blank problem. So you could have a student come up and solve this, or you could solve it yourself, write an equation, or you can come out here and use the draw uh, menu and let's just say we got a point there and a point there and a point there, point there, and then what would this draw? and kind of get approximation. And this is not pretty, I know. Learning's messy. And Gordon Sanson from Monash University uses the term low fidelity and high fidelity. This is obviously low fidelity, not a lot of detail, and it's just kind of a rough draft. Just want to get out there and get the conceptual learning down. Here's an example of music. So I can come out here and let's say that I want to write uh, what these notes are. So here's C, D, E, F, G, and I always want to say H, but A, B, C. Now, that's much different experience if your students have a pen-enabled device. Instead of asking a multiple choice question or fill out a bubble sheet or whatever, you're actually seeing the student learning uh, in this, and you can just go so much deeper with it. Let's take a look at a science example here. So I can come up here and say this is planet Earth. So I can just write on this, and again, I'm writing directly on the tablet, and then ask the student what continent is this, and there's North America, South America. I can even go out there and pre-populate this, since this is OneNote, I can go out there and uh, put in rotating objects, so let me just animate this. So here we have a, a spinning globe uh, out there, just animated. 
And then, of course, we can also do assessments. And that's what I love about making OneNote the, the base, the anchor to this system, because it's the complete package. It organizes the information. You can distribute this page to every student in individual notebooks, like with three clicks with a class notebook. So let's just do the solar system quiz real quick. What planet's known as the red planet? That would be Mars. What's, what is this a picture of? This is planet Earth. And then I can hit Submit. So now then, in class, I've got a pre-populated. Now, if my students have a device, I can send them that link, or within OneNote, they can just simply go there. And you can see that I got two out of two right, so that's correct. And if I miss something, it could give me feedback. In this case, I just put a, a link, go to nasa.gov for planet Earth, so you can go there to learn more. And then finally, I want to leave you with uh, kind of a brain download of all the different things. I uh, just, just did a sketch note. So here is a sketch note of kind of some of the thinking behind the, uh, the, the onebording 3.0 concept. And what I want to stress to you is where I leave this presentation today and what you see with some of the fancy graphics and things, that's just the beginning. Now the real work, the teaching and learning begins because now you can differentiate the instruction. You can go out and individualize things. You can uh, go out and easily collect assessment data. Students can do the work. You're just one click away from their notebook. And again, uh, with, the, uh, with the digital pen, you're just providing a lot of different uh, solutions. So let me just go big screen here. Now I'm going to put a black backdrop around because right now you can see all of this is over, over my face. So let me put a black backdrop here. And I'll just go ahead and continue on. Uh, I, I want to wrap up because I want to keep this under 15 minutes. But what you can see here is if I hit Ink Replay, that's another feature within OneNote. And you can kind of see these uh, kind of like an instant replay where you can rewind the notes and then play them forward. And that has some instructional advantage as well. So we'll go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, I want to leave you with my contact information. So you can see that my uh, Twitter handle is at Tom Grissom. I've got a number of hashtags out there if you want to follow along on uh, social media. And I encourage you to give this one boarding a try. And until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning.